the next part of the chapter talks about what happens when you discard or you sell one of these assets. Well, it depends. Okay, let's go back to our original example. We're not going to do the double declining. But let's say we've had this truck for a year, okay? It has a value of $65,000. We're using the straight line depreciation, which was $12,000 a year. So this gets us a value of $53,000. So this is what's on our books. If we then turned around and stole it for $53,000, no gain, no loss, because it's on our books at $53,000. However, if we sold this for $55,000, it's on our books at $53,000. We sold it for $55,000. What do we have? We have a gain of $2,000. Okay? okay, that's pretty straightforward. What if we sold it for $50,000? Okay, if we sold it for $50,000, well, we've got a book value of $53,000. If we sold it for $50,000, we have a loss of $3,000. Okay, what if it was demolished or we just discarded it? Well, if we just lost it, $53,000 loss because it's on our books at $53,000 and we've discarded it, then it's gone. And so we have to get this $53,000 off of our books so we would have a loss, okay? So that's what the next part of the chapter talks about. What happens when you discard assets? What happens when you sell assets? It's very straightforward, but you have to get the book value for the asset. And when I say book value, I mean our cost less how much we've depreciated it thus far. So that gets us, in this case, our book value, in my example, was after the first year. Okay, the next part of the chapter talks about natural resources. What happens if you have a diamond mine, or a gold mine, or ore, or something like that? Well, it's an asset, and it's, it's similar to a fixed asset. We are going to depreciate it, just like you did in the other. Usually we use the straight line method, or a units of production type method. The textbook goes over those examples, so make sure you look at that. But we don't call it depreciation. We call it depletion. But it's the same thing, okay? It's a form of depreciation, but we just use a different term. It's called depletion, okay? What about intangibles? Okay, that's what the next part of the chapter goes over. Copyrights, patents, trademarks, those are intangibles. They are assets. They have value. When you purchase a trademark or purchase a patent, they're usually very costly or they can be very costly. Do they decrease in value over time? Typically they do, and the textbook explains how that works, and you do have to depreciate it, but like natural resources, it's not called depreciation. It's called amortization. So they're all the same things. They're very similar. When it's a fixed asset, it's called depreciation. When it's an intangible, it's called amortization, and when it's a natural resource, then it's called depletion. All right, the chapter does a very good job of explaining those. You know, once you understand depreciation, those other two methods are pretty easy. Just read through them and make sure you understand them. You should be in good shape. All right, well, good luck with this chapter. Uh, it's, I, I hope it's a little bit easier chapter than the other ones. It makes sense. My recommendation is, like always, make sure you read through the chapter at least a couple of times because the first time through, you're just kind of starting to grasp the concepts. And that second time through, and sometimes even that third time through, really cemented in your brain. All right? Good luck with the chapter.